welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Natalie Megan. I recently did a deep dive rant review on the TikTok darling haunting Adeline and it nearly took me out. It felt like I was dying the entire time. Not to be dramatic. And while Haunting Adeline was not my first step into the dark romance category, it was definitely the worst by all accounts. I highly recommend you going and watching my review. It's some of my best work, even though it's the worst thing ever. Anyway, that horrible experience led me down several different paths. One of those paths is this path that led me to you here, hanging out, which is cool. Another path, like a segue off of the regular path, is a fundraising thing that I'm doing right now. I currently have a goal up on coffee because several of you want me to read this second book, Hunting Adeline, and I will not do so without financial compensation. If you want to fund my suffering for your entertainment, head on over there and throw me a couple bucks. Donate if you think I should suffer. And the other path I found myself wandering down hinged on the question, do I even like dark romance? And if so, what? I made a dark romance spreadsheet, you know, for science. The link is down below if you want to peep it, or you can even go to it, click the little dots and select make a copy so you can make your own dark romance list. The whole purpose of the spreadsheet was to keep me organized as I started consuming mass amounts of dark romance. We've got monsters, we've got mafia, we've got dark fairy tale retellings, we've got stalker, we've got sports, we've got it all. Okay, not all, but this is an ongoing project and I will continue to add books to this list as those books find me. People tend to view dark romance as very polarized topic, black or white, you either like it or you don't. But I think it's a little more nuanced than that, just like every other human experience. Your lived experiences color your perspectives and give you a conditional take, no matter how small or insignificant those conditions might seem. And with that in mind, and the fact that I'm a firm believer in reading what you want to read, as long as you're not harming anyone else, I set off on a quest to find my flavor of dark romance. And I'm bringing you with me. So welcome to my dark romance diaries. A couple disclaimers before we get started, because of course, the first one is always the same. This review will contain spoilers, opinions, and general shit talking. It won't be as in depth as my rant reviews. Those tend to go like all in, but I will be sharing my feelings on things. And there's a little bit of spoilers too. So I will try to timestamp as best I can so that if you see a book that I'm about to discuss and you want to read it before you hear my opinions on it, you can stop the video, go read it and come back. I try to timestamp all my videos anyway, because you know, we're friends. Second, the format that I'm filming the video in today is a little different. The format is inspired by Hannah from A Clockwork Reader YouTube. Specifically, this comes from her reading experiment series that she's done. She included little unscripted in real time reactions to her reading progress as she went along, kind of taking us with her through the whole thing. I just thought that was really smart. Plus I'm reading a lot of books in this particular genre and I feel like this is a good way of documenting that while also giving me and you an opportunity to see which books might make a real good rant review in the future. So keep that in mind. Last, since we're in the dark romance genre, darker themes and heavier subject matter is expected. I will provide trigger warnings when I'm going over the details of the book before each book and I'll also timestamp everything accordingly so that you can protect yourself. Again, this won't be as deep of a dive as my usual rant reviews, but just in case I'm going to try to do my best to look out for you so that you can look out for you. How did I get these books? That's a great question. I scoured the internet, Instagram, book talk. I even went to Reddit, which I don't do. I sought out the best, the spiciest, the most popular, and I added them to the list. Today I will be going over five books that I read. I've read more, but we're starting with five. And the first one is The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. This is a dark, spicy, why choose romance about Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. Yeah, it's 196 pages and the trigger warnings are sexual content, kidnapping, violence, and murder. Yes, I'm editing from my bed, sorry. But I wanted to let you know that Nikki actually provided this list of trigger warnings on her website and it was a little bit more thorough than the one Storygraph provided, which is what I was just reading. So I just wanted to throw these out there. The synopsis reads, For two centuries, all of the darling women have disappeared on their 18th birthday. Sometimes they're only gone for a day, some a week or a month, but they always return broken. Now on the afternoon of my 18th birthday, my mother is running around the house making sure all the windows are barred and the doors are locked. But it's pointless because when night falls, he comes for me. And this time, the Never King and the Lost Boys aren't willing to let me go. I first heard about this on TikTok. Everybody loves this book over there. And I love dark fairy tale retellings and I love Peter Pan. So here we go. Mm. So I'm about halfway 
through. It's not, okay, the premise. The premise appealed to me, right? The line of darling women are cursed that every year on their 18th birthday, Peter Pan comes and kidnaps them. Something horrible happens to them and they return to the world broken, right? That's intriguing, especially as someone who loves the story of Peter Pan. I like the idea of leaning back into the darkness because Peter Pan's a pretty dark story. How, however, there's literally nothing to it. I'm halfway through and they have given me nothing. I don't feel particularly pulled in and enveloped by this world. Everything was done just a little. So much could have been delved into, pushed a little further, explored a little more, and don't get me started on the subject verb agreement. I'm having a hard time and that sucks because I kind of wanted to like this, but it's okay. I'm feeling like two stars right now. I guess we'll see. Wow, it did not get better. Yeah, here's the deal. This book was really poorly written. Very cringy, lacking in structure, both in plot and characters. Speaking of characters, there were multiple POVs, like so many that it was jarring every single time a new chapter started because I had to go back and figure out who this person was. None of the characters, except for maybe two, had distinct enough voices to where I just knew who we were dealing with without having to take a second, which took me out of the story, which took away from my overall enjoyment. The female main character is Winnie, AKA Winnie the Whore, a nickname that some of her classmates gave because apparently she likes to bang her way through all of the sports teams at her school, which, you know, no shade, but Winnie the Whore? Kids were a lot more creative with their hate when I was in school, but okay. Anyway, she turns 18, Pan shows up, whooshes her off to Neverland to stay with the Lost Boys until they break the curse or whatever. Several men in this house, well, boys, well, men, they're several hundreds of years old. They've been doing this to her family for generations, which is odd since she's freshly 18. Y'all know how I love that. It's my favorite. Upon getting her there, Pan lets us know that there's only one rule. We don't fuck the darlings. Which is a weird rule because he then lets us know that they never fucked the darlings, but they're how they got into this trouble in the first place. If you've never fucked the darlings, why do you have the rule? Story time. Picture it. It's 1999, okay? My mom is living her life, minding her business. She is called to action to come up with a brand new house rule, which is don't bite your sister on the nose. Did my mom just pull this out of her ass randomly in the middle of a Tuesday? No, 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 no. There was a reason. She created this rule after my sister went and tattled on me for biting her nose, which is typical of Kaylee. Shout out to Kaylee. I didn't even bite her that hard. It was just like a little nibble. Stop looking at me like that. All of this to say, really niche rules like that don't tend to exist until there is a need for the rule. You know what I mean? So spare me. Plus we know that this is dark romance, so they're gonna end up breaking the rule anyway, right? But what we don't know, what we don't know is why. What's different about Winnie aside from blowing through entire football, basketball, baseball teams at her squall? She's really dumb and has no personality. I don't really understand what the pull of her is. Again, they've been doing this for generations with these girls. You know, now that I'm sitting down reporting this and going back through it, I realize how much I hated this book and that I made 159 highlights. There's 196 pages. So with that in mind, this might be a really good contender for a future deep dive episode. Going over all of this stuff, the book is stupider than I remember. So I might continue to read just to see. But even if it did get better, I don't think it would make up for what I lost here. You let me know. Last but not least, The Spice. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. It was fine. <sighs> My final rating for The Never King is two stars. No thanks, on to the next. <laughs> So next up on my list, I read Death's Obsession by Avina St. James. This is a dark romantic centering around a woman and um, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> it's 178 pages and the trigger warnings are sexual content, death, stalking, car accident, grief, death of parent, toxic relationships, suicide ideation, cancer, and drug abuse. And the synopsis reads, he's coming for you. Death is meant to come on a chariot of broken dreams or in the dark trenches of a storm not in love letters and gifts. He did not take my soul when I was meant to die. He did not want it all the times I offered it to him on a silver platter. Yet time and time again, he reminds me that I am his, his night monster, his dark love, 
his perfect other. Death was the only thing keeping me alive. He watches me from his corner, taunts me with sweet messages, marks my body with his touch as I sleep. He took the people that I love away from me. Still, no one believed me when I said I saw the faceless man on the night of the accident. No one can escape death. Me? There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Listen. <laughs> I found this book on TikTok. There was just a TikTok of a girl saying, I would never read a book just because of the dedication. And then it showed the dedication. <laughs> so yeah, I read it. Let's go. I am 20% of the way in. Never heard of this book before. It's a Grim Reaper romance. I'm very excited though. I have high expectations for this and I'll tell you why. First of all, it's Grim Reaper romance. Thank you, yes, please. More, please. Second of all, look at the trigger warnings. Look at all of them, my word. And then the author's note. If you by chance know Greek mythology and are well-versed in Latin, I sincerely apologize for this book. It won't be accurate. So we've got a funny, self-aware author with an extensive list of trigger warnings provided at the beginning of the book. I'm happy just with that. Like, it's literally not even difficult. I feel good about it. Plus, I'm about 20% of the way in. I'm intrigued. I'm nervous because now I feel like I have high expectations and they could come crumbling down around me. But I don't know. I'm kind of... I'm kind of excited about it and I'm interested and I, it's going well so far. Ugh, keep me in your prayers. <laughs> I, I almost have no thoughts because I don't know what to think because what are thoughts? Because what did I just read? Like 178 pages, right? 178 pages, 137 annotations. Like what did I just Great. Grim Reaper smut with dual POV. One belonging to our female main character, Lilith, and one belonging to the faceless man, AKA the Grim Reaper, AKA Leadum. Let's start with Lilith. First of all, love her name. Lilith is struggling in several ways. She's navigating grief. She has a shitty boyfriend. She's barely making ends meet financially. Oh, and the fact that she's receiving mail on parchment from a faceless man that only she can see. Concerning. I had a really good time with this book. I honestly haven't been able to sort through my feelings yet because I have a lot of them. And they're very blurry. Like a lot happened. A lot happened. Like what happened? I mean, I know, but do I? The way everything unfolded had me like scratching my head, but in a good way. And the sp <laughs> the spice, I, oof, I, use your words was, <laughs> shut up. Use your words wasn't a phrase that I thought would appeal to me. However, <laughs> I have been wrong before. It is known to happen occasionally. And this was one of those times. Liedem was, um, Liedem was cool. <laughs> he was hot. I don't know what that says about me, nor am I ready to explore that here with you on the internet. Not today, anyway. There were some parts of the story that were a little harder for me to swallow, like how is the Grim Reaper texting? The fuck? However, I was having so much fun overall that I just let that go. I won't spoil anything else. I had a fun little time with this. I'm thinking 3.5, maybe four stars. I don't know. It was fun, I don't know, shut up. Before we go on, I thought this might be a good time to let you know that I started making skins. Look at my little Kindle. I got my cute and creepy ghosts on here. And it had, well, don't, shut up. This is for my next video. Um, but it has the stars on the front and then on the back it has my cute and creepy ghosts. I think I have like 12 designs total in the shop right now. I don't know, check it out if you feel like it. Let's move on. Next up, I read His to Keep by Lydia Goodfellow. This is a YA dark romance about a young girl who's kidnapped by a sadistic priest. So we've got some religious trauma there. 287 pages, and I believe that this was originally published on Wattpad. The trigger warnings are body horror, child abuse, confinement, abandonment, car accident, cancer, and incest. Ava is ripped from her life by a sadistic priest on her way home from school. He leads a very sinister and secret life. She's forced to live in a room with his son, trapped in a house of hell. Day by day, her innocence is torn apart, but despite witnessing horrific events, she finds herself caring for the boy with dark secrets. To survive, Ava must choose between her freedom and love. What will she choose? It does give me a little pause that it's YA dark romance, like how spicy are we about to get with these children, you know? But let's get into it. Okay, so I'm halfway through this and so far, really intrigued. There's a sadistic priest. He's kidnapped this girl. She's being held in this mansion for a ceremony. I'm with you. I'm with you, bud. Sitting where I'm at now, I think that this is my 
lane. I want the religious trauma. I want it. I don't know why. No, I do. What are you gonna do? Anyway, I will say I don't particularly love hearing about a 16 year old having sexual feelings. Like I'm just a little too old for that. I can't, I don't, I, I don't particularly, I'm not enjoying that. And the guy I feel is a couple years older, maybe like 19, 20. So right away I'm like, it's clear that they're trauma bonding. So I'm willing to let that go, but I'm hopeful. And it's YA. So, you know, I knew that I was getting younger people. I just, you know what, I just wanted to put that out there. But so far, really liking it. I I'm really digging it. I I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And knowing that it started as like Wattpad fanfic or whatever, and now it's a book book. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not bad. Not bad, honestly. So we'll see. I, you know, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I'm very middle ground here. The writing wasn't bad. I didn't notice it if it was. If I don't notice the writing, it can only help your cause. The story was so intriguing to me because like I said, I live for religious trauma stories. I love a good sadistic priest storyline, love it. And this was great as far as that's concerned. It was upsetting and creepy, a little gory, but it really just kind of fell apart at the end, which is a huge bummer. We meet Ava, but we only get a little bit of insight into who she is as a character before she's kidnapped and locked away in this mansion. And that is how we get to know her. I think that was done pretty well. I was rooting for her. I wanted her to do well. I wanted her to escape. I, I was interested in seeing her through. And again, it was kind of gory gruesome at times, like for YA especially, like I was taken aback. The Spice, it's YA, you know? It's different than like a spicy romance and it does have sexual scenes, but I think it's more about their relationship, their experience as young adults and teenagers that is just honest to what they were going through in that time and to kind of show us how trauma bonding works in situations like this. It wasn't explicit by any means, so it was fine, but I also didn't really like that she was 16 and the son was like 1920, it's a little, but they're trauma bonding, okay? I'm willing to let it go. Uh, it fell apart at the end. Things felt really rushed and thrown together. Kind of soured the whole thing. I only made like 20 highlights. So I don't know if this would be a good candidate for a deep dive because I didn't have a lot of thoughts going through it. And I, I don't really have a lot of thoughts now. I feel very medium about it. I enjoyed the book, but only just so. And once I closed it, I kind of forgot about it. It left my body. It was one of those for me, unfortunately. So because of that, I gave his to keep 2.5 stars, but I rounded up to three. It's a middle rating for a medium book. Next up, we have The Pucking Wrong Number by C.R. Jane. It is a dark hockey romance with 390 pages. Excessive. The trigger warnings are stalking, toxic relationship, death of parent, death, addiction, sexual harassment, panic disorders, panic attacks, child abuse, and drug abuse. And the synopsis reads, oh, one text to the wrong number, mine, and everything changed. He won't tell me his last name. And maybe that should throw up a thousand red flags, but when I'm all alone in a new city struggling to make ends meet, his texts are the lifeline I've been desperate for. But I never would have answered that text if I'd known that Lincoln Daniels, superstar hockey player extraordinaire, was the one sending them. Ugh. He's trying to sweep me off my feet now. He says he's obsessed. He wants me wearing his number permanently. I don't know what that means. The question is, is he still the wrong number? Or can this hockey god prove he's Mr. Right? <laughs> that's rough. That's rough all by itself. And there's 390 pages to this thing. Goodreads did this to me. I was on Goodreads. I was logging some of my reading and it popped up in a recommended book for me. And I was like, oh, Oh no. But anyway, let's go. Hello. So I found this today. 46% of the way in and I'm gonna let you know, it's not great. Monroe, which is our female main character, Lincoln, who is our male main character and love interest and hockey superstar and stalker. There's not really much to Monroe. I mean, she did survive a lot of really chaotic things in her childhood. She's in the foster system. She's beautiful, dark hair, green eyes. Great, love that. Nothing else. Except for the fact that every man that comes anywhere near Monroe wants to bang her. But like one of her bosses wants to sleep with her and is really inappropriate. Her landlord is super creepy. This guy in her class won't take no for an answer. Like it's just, I'm exhausted already. And then Lincoln shows up, falls head over heels for her, becomes super obsessed. And I'm like, why? Somebody needs to tell me why. 
Speaking of Lincoln, a blonde male love interest is never gonna work for me. Absolutely not. He is a hockey superstar, but he has like daddy issues because somehow he is, Lincoln, is responsible for killing his older brother who was like everything that Lincoln was not. His dad like is a billionaire who resents him. I don't know nor do I care. It's real dumb. And the writing is really strange as well. So the name is the pucking wrong number. Love a good puck pen. Pun. What? Oh my god. It's, it's not great. And it's hockey romance. I, I'm not gonna count hockey and or sports romance out. This is just, it's just not it. I don't like it. Unless some drastic changes happen. It's not looking like that's gonna change much, so fun. <laughs> um, absolutely not. Full disclosure, I've never read, um, a sports romance. I just don't feel like it would be a thing that I would enjoy. I played fast pitch softball for like 14 years of my life. It was a really big part of my childhood and my teen years and my family's life growing up, but I don't gravitate towards sports now. I am super competitive and it is right below the surface. All you have to do is want and I'm yelling. I do tend to channel the energy of a drywall punching Kyle when I am involved or observing a sporting event. So I'd just rather not, you know, I just keep my distance. <laughs> Needless to say, I hated this book and not because it was sports romance. No, no, that was the least of my worries. This book is shitty, cheesy, awful, undercooked, unseasoned trash. It is so bad. Our female main character is 19, hot, poor, and that's it, which is a shame because I thought we were gonna get a badass. She watched her mom die in front of her of a drug overdose when she was 10. She grew up in the foster system. She escaped a really creepy foster family on like the eve of her 18th birthday. She literally fled to a different city and started all over. Like all of that has the makings of a really cool, badass female main character, right? No, wrong. She's hot, she's poor, and everybody wants to do her riveting. And then there's Lincoln. He's a 24 year old billionaire professional hockey player with daddy issues and a dead brother. He fucks though. Don't, don't worry. Okay. He fucks. Of course he does. He's also blonde. And listen, I didn't need this particular project to teach me this, but I am learning a lot. And one of the things that was just relearned, I would rather have a love interest with no hair than blonde hair. No hair over blonde hair. Adult blonde men grow up. We'll, we'll come back to Lincoln in a second, but first let's talk about the team. Because obviously if you go into a hockey romance, a sports romance in general, you expect to see some of the like camaraderie, the teamwork, the, the connections on the field or on the ice or wherever you are, in the dugout. I don't know. Again, I played sports as a kid. I know I'm a girl, so it was probably a little different being in my locker room versus the boys' locker room. However, 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 on what planet? And every single team coach interaction is is like this. Motherfucker, shithead, pussy, douchebag. Please stop. I want you to take this kind of bullshit. I want you to put it into your mind. I want you to process it and export it out as smut. Imagine the smut. <sighs> no, no thanks, fella. No thanks, fella. No thanks. Move along, please. The relationship was baseless and stupid because she was stupid and he was psychotic and obsessed over nothing. I mean, crossing boundaries left and right. I won't spoil much else because I think this would be another good contender for a deep dive rant review on my channel. But I will say around the middle part of the book, I was still on the fence. I was like, I hate this, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe we could figure this out. I don't like this, but it might surprise me. And then it got worse. All of this chaos started, it got worse, and then it was promptly and inexplicably tied up nicely in a little bow. No, mm-mm, absolutely not. I think that the dramatic readings alone would be enough to carry this into rant review territory. I think it would be very entertaining for y'all because these voices that I do here for you already live in here. And I gotta tell ya, it's pretty funny. I give the Pucky Grong number 1.5 stars. What a freaking mess. Okay, last one, are we ready? For our last book, I read Sweet Inferno by Elliot Rose. This is an indie published supernatural dark romanticy. It's 144 pages and the trigger warnings are confinement, sexual content, and torture. The synopsis reads, alone in this world, she's kept her secret her whole life, staying safe and unassuming, completing her role in the castle of the house of Ellerian. 
I don't know if I said that right. Comfortably alone, quietly devoted, and grateful to the masters who sheltered her from the orphan's destitution. Idalia hides her true self, but when the claws that threaten her neck one night also threaten to rip down the walls around her heart, she strikes a bargain. Highly trained, deadly, and 300 years old, Fern is a shifter wolf out to complete his reconnaissance mission. He's been watching her for weeks, determined to extract information about the dark witches she is loyal to. Before he discovers the truth, she better hope her heart doesn't betray her. The only problem is she just lied. She's his little dragon. He's her thief. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I don't really care for the synopsis. Was really intrigued by the idea of a witch shifter wolf romance. That's what pulled me in. The synopsis did nothing for me, but I was like, ooh, a witch, a wolf, a witch and a wolf. Okay. Okay, so I started reading this. The first book, a standalone novella in the Nocturnal Heart series. Hannah sent me the second book in the series and I was like, I can't just jump in, so I'm gonna start at the beginning. Dark paranormal romanticy, I guess, is the category I'm learning. Uh, I'm still learning. And the female main character is a witch and the male main character is a shifter wolf. One of, uh, I'm so worried about jinxing myself, but I kinda like it. It's not poorly written, which is water in a desert to my parched soul. The characters are interesting. The female main character is a bigger girl. She also is 32, not freshly 18, not brand new, not, what? I do what with it where? No, she's 32. She speaks briefly of a sexual history of her own. So that means that she is a sexual being and in her 30s, which leads me to believe that we might be getting a main character, a female main character who likes having sex, understands what she likes and what she doesn't. Therefore, I trust her. I'm with her on this journey. I feel better going into this than I have with any of these other freaking books. And it's not even difficult. It's, I don't feel like any of this stuff was asking for too much. With all of that in mind, I don't feel like this man's monster dick is gonna solve all of her problems, which is common in other... There was this one line too, having a little fun, and he's like, will you have me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Please, for the love of God, like I'm not saying that this is like the next great American novel, Nobel Prize or whatever. I'm saying that this is a breath of fresh, spicy air after quite a journey. Please, please don't let me be jinxing this. Oh. Listen. I really liked this one. I will absolutely be continuing with this series. It was so fun. I'm just sweating about it. Not really, because I don't really like sweat. I'm not a sweaty gal, but the sentiment remains. So our female main character, Adalia or Leah, I love her. And not just because she's a witch with fire powers. No. I think I, I, think I covered all of this in the update video, but I want to reiterate that this is a 32-year-old curvy sexual fire witch who's also telepathic. I am so sick of the freshly 18 doe-eyed virgin who swears that this random stranger's dick changed their lives. This woman, Leah, if and when she starts banging the main male character, if she says that his dick game is on point, if it's wonderful, magical, life-changing, I'm more inclined to believe her. And I am invigorated by this. It is a breath of fresh air. I swear to God, and it's not even, like I said, it's not even difficult. It's not. <sighs> Let me calm down. Fern is a hot shifter with an eyebrow scar. He watches her. He sneaks into the castle. He tries to find and steal something that's in there. And the connection is like instant, which I don't usually like, but I did hear. For some reason with mythical creatures, I can kind of suspend my disbelief a little bit more. For some reason, them being a mythical creature makes it a little easier to swallow. Despite their connection though, she can't read his mind, which is very Edward and Bella of them. It's a very short read. And I don't want to give anything else away because I think it was really good. What unfolded in this novella is enough to keep me reading on in the series, which is difficult for me because one, I'm not big on fantasy and I'm also not a series person. Like if you have something to tell me, get it over with. Especially with fantasy or dark romance series, people are like, you got to get to like the fourth book before it gets better. No, I don't. 
not doing that. The fact that I want to keep reading this, this is very special. I gave this a tentative 3.75 stars. And I think it's honestly probably a little higher, but it's the first in a series and I have expectations now. So it's tentative and I reserve my right to change my mind later. I will be continuing the series, as I said, and we will see where the rating goes from there. All right, how's everybody feeling? Good, we good? I feel pretty good ending on a high note like that. It's so rare for my videos. Before we cut out though, I wanted to rank them in order of like my least favorite to my most favorite. Again, I read five dark romance books for this video and starting at the bottom, number five, fifth place goes to The Pucking Wrong Number. It was so stupid. The team interactions alone, but then also I hated Lincoln. I hated, w I don't even remember her name. And the way that it ended, Absolutely not. There was nothing positive to be gained from this except that I yelled a lot and we might get a good rant review out of this. I definitely feel dumber for having read this. So it is my least favorite. In fourth place, we have The Never King, which sucks because I really wanted to like this. Peter Pan and The Lost Boys were somehow both chaotic and boring. Winnie the Whore left me unsatisfied, believe it or not. The writing was bad, the characters were unlikable. The jumping from POV to POV took me out of the story and pissed me off, honestly. I would read one more book in this series just to see if it gets better, though I don't really see it getting, I, mm, it was rough. In third place, smack dab in the middle is His to Keep by Lydia Goodfellow. So I forgot to mention earlier Earlier that I found this on Reddit. People specifically recommended it for having really good writing. And I will say, I did not mind the writing. The writing was decent. I didn't notice it, and that's usually a pretty good sign. My favorite kind of writing is writing that just flows, and I barely notice. So it had that, but I didn't have super strong feelings about it. I really enjoyed it while I was in it, but then, like I said, when I closed it and moved on, I moved on. I really liked the religious themes and the dynamics that were playing out over time in this story, but the ending felt so rushed and ultimately really disappointing. But I definitely will be seeking out more religious trauma in my dark romance. We're on to something. The last two books were really difficult to me because they came like neck and neck, but ultimately, Ultimately, I liked one better than the other, just a little bit, just a smidge more. So the number two spot goes to Death's Obsession. Honestly, the questions that I was left with were kind of like unsettling, not because it was wrong or bad or anything. I just didn't know how to feel. And when I don't know how to feel, I don't know how to feel. You feel me? Uh, the spice was good. <laughs> And there was more to the story than just banging it out, which I appreciate. Plus, the author gave us a funny dedication and an extensive comprehensive list of trigger warnings at the beginning of the book, which is really bars down there, but I can still tell when someone meets it. Way to go. It really set the tone for me enjoying this book, and I wasn't disappointed or let down at any point. So that leaves the first place spot wide open for... Sweet Inferno. The reason that this beat out Death's Obsession for first place really comes down to the vibes, okay? It's about the vibes. Liked the setting, creepy castle with grounds and dungeons and gardens. I liked, no loved, I loved female main character was a curvy sexy witch. Are you kidding? Liked the way she and Fern interacted and spoke to each other. I will be enthusiastically continuing this series, but not for the same reasons I'm gonna read on in the Never King series. I am continuing this series in hopes that it will stay the course stay steady and not come crashing down around me, ultimately ruining my life. So there you go. Final ranking and my summarized thoughts. You're welcome. I had such a fun time making this video. Let me know what you feel about this format, if you enjoyed it too. I feel like I got a little sassy with some stuff and I also feel like it gives us a good jumping off position. Like this is five books in one video. So you can tell me which one you're most intrigued by, which one you might wanna read, which ones you have read, which ones you wanna hear me yell about. Like there's a lot that can come from this video and I'm really excited to share it with you and get your feedback. But I definitely do think there are some rant reviews in here and it, even if there weren't, I would find at least one because it seems like a shame to read all this bullshit and get no content out of it. Let's chat about it in the comments. I love hearing your insights and your perspective on these things. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I also have a Patreon and a coffee page. I just started a Discord. You get access to that when you sign up over there. I've got a whole bunch of really cool stuff down in the show notes and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.